Burial and final funeral rites of former Vice President Papakwisi Bekwin Emisa Arthur will start today. His body will be laid in state at the Accra uh, International Conference Center right there in the foyer where between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. today, mourners will file past his body to pay their last respects. The family of the late Vice President have warned against the use of cameras during this stage of the ceremony. On Friday, July 27, a burial service will be held in the auditorium of the uh, Accra International Conference Center between 9 a.m. and midday. Now here is what you need to know about a life well lived. We wish him a peaceful journey. Now let's move to the Upper West Region, where President Ekufuado climaxed his two-day tour of the region by calling on chiefs and people of the region to support him to succeed. He said his aim is to work to ensure that the development of the country is balanced and inclusive. President Ekufuado made the statements in a meeting with chiefs from six districts in the Upper West Region. Rafiq Salam reports from Jirapa. The Upper West Region does not only have poor and deplorable roads, but has the worst road network in the country. It is the region with the least bitumen surface in the country. The Hameli Nanom Laura Road, the Laura Domini Heng Road, the Heng Zini Golu Road, the Wa Tumu Jefisi Road, the Hameli Fielmo Tumu Road and the Jirapa Domain Co Nandom Road. The Wahen Tumu Highway is one which for close to a decade has always found space 
in the country's budget. Yet, construction work on the road is done at a snail's pace. President Ekufu Adu, as part of his two-day official visit to the Upper West region, inspected work on the 76-kilometer Wahain Road. The project, which is in phases, is being executed by P and W Ghanim Limited. The first 24 kilometers of the project has been completed, leaving 34 kilometers, which is still under construction. President Ekufu Adu stated that he already has plans afoot for the road. As far as roads are concerned, as you are aware, the road that goes through Hai and goes from here to Tumu is part of the Sino Hydro uh, projects that are going to be rolled out as from September. Despite the heavy downpour, the people of Ulu will not want to miss the opportunity of catching a glimpse of a certain president for the first time in their community. They defy the rain with pupils of busy schools holding placards, loud and intervention programs. Among the issues the Paramount Chief of the Ulo traditional area will want the government to tackle is the creation of a new district for the area and the lack of portable water. I've asked the Minister for Local Government, who fortunately is here with me, to consider very seriously your request for a district. And I know that, so she's going to study it and will come back to you very shortly. Community here, I noticed that water is one of your main issues. The community here will also be receiving a community-based mechanized solar-powered water system. President Ekufu Ado climaxed his visit by meeting chiefs from six districts in the region. Paramount Chief of Laura, Napo Wole Cabo III, speaks for the chiefs. We wish to remind Your Excellency of our earlier plea during our courtesy call on you at the Jubilee House to create a separate share board from the COCO board with a more focused mandate to develop the share industry. It is our hope that with the necessary support of government the recently inaugurated Northern Development Authority could be the conduit for the realization of this goal. President Ekufuado pledged to work to ensure that the development of the country is balanced and inclusive and call on the chiefs and people to support him to succeed. It was, uh, the young men can devote their energies to help him build up their own communities. Instead of coming to Accra and becoming part of problems there, they can help grow their own communities. If that focus of a balanced and equitable distribution of the country takes place. Reporting for Dwayne News, Rafik Salam, Jiruba. <laughs>The former vice president begins his final journey today and as the nation celebrates his life, the Accra International Conference Center is becoming the beginning of that final journey. The hearse carrying his mortal remains has arrived at that location and Maxwell Agbagba can join us now with updates. Maxwell, good morning. Good morning, Kujo. A somber occasion, but certainly... Uh, a sense of uh, ceremony has begun there. Tell us what is occurring. Well, um, Kujo, the um, hairs um, carrying the remains of the former vice president um, arrived here about um, five minutes um, ago. Now, what is happening here is that you're making sure that everything is ready um, before they move the body um, to the um, Accra International Conference Center where um, people will be able to file past, um, you know, the remains at the foyer of the Accra International Conference Center. So what is happening here is that we have some um, family members, we have um, some military personnel, we have some police officers, all of them here. Um, waiting for um, the final touches um, to, to, uh, to, to be done inside the foyer of the Accra International Conference Center before they move um, the, uh, the, the remains there. But 
Here at the forecourt of the um, State House, we have some key tents. Um, I've counted about 20 of them um, already um, erected here at the um, forecourt of the State House. Now, if you go to the forecourt of the Accra International Conference Center also, we have about uh, 15 marquee tents. All the chairs there are black in color. All the marquee tents we have here are a mix of, you know, um, red and then um, black. Now, the main entrance of the Accra International Conference Center uh, has the uh, uh, the photograph of the um, former vice president in a beautiful kinti clothes uh, um, waving at a crowd. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I presume that picture um, was taken during, um, you know, uh, one, one, one of the state functions. He's actually waving to a crowd, um, quite symbolic, as he's also waving us this time around that he's, you know, he's checked out. Um, of this world. Already there's some drumming um, going on at the um, forecourt of the, uh, uh, um, the Accra International you know, Conference Center. We understand that exactly 8 a.m. Um, the gates of the uh, Accra International Conference Center will be open so that um, people will be able to file past you know, um, the, um, the body of the former, um, the remains of the former um, vice president. Now the conference center itself uh, has been draped in the colors of the um, Ghana flag, red, gold, green with a black star in the middle. I don't know if you can see um, behind me, um, the casket carrying, um, uh, you know, the remains of the former vice president is also draped in the colors red, yellow, green, um, red, gold, green, with a black star in the middle. We have some bouquet of flowers also um, on top of it inside, you know, the hairs. So we are waiting right now for family members and then um, the military to um, take the body to the foyer of the Accra International Conference Center, where um, it will be lying in state from 8 a.m. to um, 6 p.m., um, we are told, Kojo. We've been made to understand that the family of the former vice president have asked for uh, a ban on cameras uh, during this stage of the ceremony. What can you tell us about that? Yes, um, so we got here around 5.30 um, a.m. Um, I saw some family members, I actually introduced myself, that I work with Joy News, and we told them that we're just coming to um, see what is happening in there. Um, the first reminder that I got was that they're not going to allow, you know, cameras in there. Um, it looks like they've put all mechanisms, you know, in place to ensure that people do not um, come inside um, with their mobile phones or, you know, any, any gadgets that can, you know, capture um, the, uh, 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 the remains of the um, former vice president. So it looks like they've really done a lot of work and um, they, they, they really would want to, you know, um, enforce that from my interactions with um, one of the um, family members. You also know um, that the um, police gave us notice that they'll be blocking uh, um, some of the roads, especially the road, uh, those two traffic lights. Um, road, the local stretch um, that has been close to traffic. Um, now, earlier when we arrived at, arrived at 5.30 a.m., I saw some personnel of the Motor Transport and Traffic Department doing some reconnaissance um, uh, for about 30 minutes. And now that road, you know, um, has been closed. If your vehicle is unmarked, you'll not be able um, to use um, the stretch in front of the um, Accra International, you know, um, Conference Center, could you? Maxwell Abgogba with an update there from the Accra International Conference Center where uh, the mortal remains of the former vice president are, are ready for, to be moved from State House to the conference center for the beginning of two days of mourning. Roland Walker is actually at the Accra International Conference Center. He and Mama Biusu Abwaji and the rest of the team are ready to bring us a live show from there. Roland, good morning. Good morning, Roland. We will connect you to the Accra International Conference Center as soon as possible. But now to the Upper East region, where more than 70,000 cashew seedlings have been destroyed and uh, has been distributed, pardon me, to farmers in the Nabadam district of the Upper East region under the Planting for Export and Rural Development program. Now, according to the Nabadam District Assembly, in the next four years, the district should be able to produce up to 5,000 tons of cashew nuts annually. Now, if the farmers manage the trees properly, that is. Upper East correspondent Albert Sore has more on the story. Farmers in the Nabadam District of the Upper East region mainly grow crops such as millet, guinea corn, maize, granuts, 
and sweet potatoes. Cultivating the cashew crop is therefore a new venture for the farmers, according to the acting district director of agriculture in the Nabdam district, Mahmoud Idi. The cashew seedlings are being distributed under the District Center for Agriculture, Commerce and Technology as part of the Planting for Export and Rural Development Program. Uh, these cashew seedlings, when we give it to the farmers, it will belong to them. Uh, when the, uh, the, the fruits and nuts are ready, uh, we would organize market for them. We would link them up and then they will buy the nuts from the farmers. And then whatever revenue that is gotten from there is for the farmers. Actually, warehouse is a challenge because uh, so far we have uh, some few that are in a very bad condition. Uh, we have one at Sakote and another, uh, another one at Pelungu. And I think these are the only warehouses we have in this district, but they are all not in good condition. Nonetheless, he is hopeful that cashew will become an important cash crop in the Nabdam district in the next four years. By three years, three to four years, we should start uh, harvesting uh, cashew. We are expecting up to, at least annually, we should be able to get up to, let's say, 5,000 tons uh, annually from cashew nuts. Baba Anafo is a farmer based in the Nabdam district. For him, Though cashew is new to farmers in the area, it will serve as an alternative source of livelihood for them. So the community we are happy to get these uh, trees. If we get them to plant in our farms, maybe the future they will benefit. Maybe dry season, somehow will leave this community and go to the south because of looking for a petty petty job to get so that we get this one. This one, that if we do it. Maybe all season because the time we start this one, we've been doing and getting something small, small. Most of the cost of the project was borne by the Nabdam District Assembly. Back to the Accra International Conference Centre now, where dressed in all black and out and about, Roland is ready with an update. Good morning, Roland. Well, good morning, Kwejo. How are you? Not bad at all. Uh, it's not a great day for the family of the former vice president, but the nation is standing by them to send off the fallen hero. Tell us what uh, the Accra International Conference Center is shaping up like this morning. Now, we know that is the laying in state uh, that is taking place today. Of course, they're going to have the funeral uh, taking place tomorrow. But definitely, this is the place to be. We're going to bring you the latest updates. And you can see that just uh, erected here on the walls of the Accra International Conference uh, Center is a, is, a, is a giant flexi of the late former vice president of our republic, Papa Kwesi Emisa Arthur. But in the meantime, we just want to show you around what has been happening. We have family, friends, trooping in, coming through to where uh, the foyer is of the Accra International Conference Center. And Kwejo, that's where we're going to have the file passed of the body of the late vice president of our republic. Already, we've had uh, since yesterday uh, a number of personnel from the various security services, notably the Ghana Armed Forces. We also have the Ghana Police Service making their uh, personnel ready. Already, they have uh, put in place the various sections where you can have visitors sitting. Uh, more so, those who will be visiting from other African countries, we're told, would also be having their uh, sitting places ready for them. Uh, the, the, the gates or the entrance of the Accra International Conference Centre is well guarded. Uh, we have the personnel from the military police also available. They have been detailed to make sure that all the movements within the precinct of the Accra International Conference Centre is well controlled in such a way that because of the mass numbers of people expected here today will be well guarded or controlled in such a way that we don't have uh, people just walking helter skelter within the premises. But we're also being told that when the event finally starts, we're going to have dignitaries from across the nation, uh, whether from the governing New Patriotic Party, those in administration today, or those who worked with the former vice president uh, at the period when they were in office, between the period, well, we have uh, 2012 to 2016. And uh, Kwejo, that's the latest we can tell you from the Accra International Conference Center. 
Uh, there will be more from Roland and the team later on the show. Stay with us for all of that. But now to the Ashanti region, where many communities uh, in the region remain cut off after bridges linking them to Kumase and the rest of the region were destroyed by recent floods. Now, while some commuters seek alternative routes, others are treading dangerously on these broken bridges. Prince Apia visited some of them to see how residents of these communities are coping with the situation. Here at Adija, in the Bosomcho district of the Ashanti region, this bridge is the only link between the community and the main town. The recent rains succeeded in dividing the bridge into two. Vehicles would have to wait for the others to skillfully meander their way on the remaining half of the bridge. Residents fear when it rains, the other half might also break and completely cut them off. Because I don't know what is going to happen to this piece tomorrow. And I know that definitely we can't hang on to this one. We got a lot of women, we got a lot of children, you know. And even this was very dangerous. So, you know, children sometimes they are working, they'll be praying. Somebody can fall into it and it can be disastrous. So Left it only half. That they are, we are now using it. So we don't know when, when the rain comes, what happens to the next one. So it's very, very scary. I, 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 I think there were no I, I, iron rods in the was, bridge. And, and, that is why it came in. Akwesi Seth is a carpenter here. He was a victim of last week's floods after hours of rain. But he is back here today to face the odds. Hey. Nah, when it's rained, I lost my property and this is where we earn our income. The bridge must be fixed for us. At a stressor in the same district, residents have to climb and descend the remainder of this broken bridge to cross to the other side. As dangerous as it is, residents say that is the only option available. First, now we in album, but then say I'm so crazy with toy, backra star, always, but yeah, say oh, bano, eh, we cry, we cry too much, no, we be at all. The situation extends to other communities in the Jesuit municipality as well. This is the bridge that connects Donaso, Onye, Esienimpong, Kwaso, Abenase, Kwamo, and others from the main Ajuso community. Heavy rains three weeks ago have rendered it inaccessible. Residents improvise with this makeshift bridge. Blaze Kujo is a teacher at a Sienimpong MA basic school. Those who are not using motorbikes and using vehicles, it's increasing their cost of transportation per week. Previously, we were spending like 15 to 16 cities per week. But now, daily is five cities. So by the end of the week, you are spending like 25 Ghana cities. He tells Love News, the state of the bridge is affecting teaching and learning. Uh, the, the time frame I'll have to use to commute from my end to school, it's affecting it. Because when I come, I have to wait. Sometimes I have to go to school late, and almost all other teachers apply in this route. It's affecting us. But the situation has created a job opportunity for commercial drivers here. A transport terminal has been created at the edge of the broken bridge to cash in on stranded travelers. But the trips are expensive, and an from Pong is a station master. We have two stations, one from Zongo Junction to this side. Then we continue from here to Abnasi and its environs. The bridge must be fixed for us. This woman has pitched camp here selling food for the new terminal. We realized so many people come here, so we decided to cash in and sell some food and water. 
Deputy Roads and Highways Minister Kwabna Owusu-Diomi says these bridges can only be fixed after the rainy season. This replacement will be in the dry season. And that should be in November, December, January, February. That's the time that we can do it. There is no way that you can construct even a coffer dam to block these huge volumes of water and put up a bridge or a culvert here. You can only have that dry weather. Until then, residents in these communities will have to improvise and endure the challenges. Prince Apia, reporting. Akwisi Seth and others in the community speaking to Prince Apia of Love News. Now, people living, especially in mining areas, are faced with water bodies polluted with dangerous substances like mercury. Those in rural parts of the country also battle with cattle for the same source of drinking water with imminent exposure to deadly germs. But that will soon be a thing of the past as the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology has designed a filter that can sieve out not only heavy metals but also bacteria. For Tech Thursday, Love FM's Kwesi Debra has been interacting with the head of the scientists, Dr. Bright Kwachi Iwa of the Department of Physics. The 2017 study by the NGO Water Sanitation and Hygiene suggests three out of every five Ghanaian drinking water are contaminated by human waste, putting them at risk of contracting cholera, dysentery, typhoid, and polio. Recently, clay pots have been used in rural homes to make polluted water safe for drinking. Though it filters out the dirt, heavy metals such as cadmium, mercury, and arsenic find their way into the filtered drinking water. Again, the bacteria responsible for food poisoning, known as Escherichia coli, is not filtered out. We tested different water samples and realized that in terms of color, nothing changed. The same color before the water was poured through, that color was the same. And then we did the microorganism test, we did the chemical test, we realized that actually it failed. Dr. Kwachia Wa and his team, therefore, began researching to one of the naturally occurring substances in the air crust, known as zeolite. Zeolites are commonly used for commercial and domestic water purification. It has a well-defined pore structure capable of filtering out bacteria and heavy metals. So we need the raw material kaolin and then we need the raw material bauxite. And that is what we have here. So once we get the two, then we add some reagent. And then the reagent and some processes will transform these two to the zeolite. He collaborated with the Technology Consultancy Center of the University to process the substance and combine with clay to produce what he calls zeolite nanopore filters. The filter is capable of producing bacteria and heavy metal free water. Interestingly, the filters perform better than the ones already on the market, including imported ones. Could not really pass any of the tests, the imported one. This is not to indict them but in fact that is what we found and then the one from TCC like I've said it failed the filtration rate the filtration rate was low and then the um, the microorganisms were forming the zeolite clay one improved the filtration rate but not like the port one the one with the bigger port on, on top and then uh, Again, because we, we added trace quantities of very trace quantities, in fact, PPB concentration of, of uh, silver ions to it. So no microorganism was formed. And as you, can, as you saw with the one Dr. Tamaklo was using, he has been using it for the past five to six years. And he's still using it, meaning that no mold had been forming. So it means microorganisms are, are inhibited and then also the filtration rate he is using it alone so it's okay for him 
But for a household, like I said, you need to add one or two more of the candles in order to meet the requirement, the volume of water required for a household of, let's say, five. So that is what we found. That is what we found. Dr. Kwachewa is hopeful the filter will reduce cases of waterborne diseases, especially in rural homes. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Kwesi Debra there with a story of hope on the uh, Tech Thursday. Uh, and it's time now for us to go across to the Accra International Conference Center, where Roland Walker and the team uh, are waiting to bring us a live show from the scene of the beginning of the final journey of Pakwe Sibekwe and Mr. Arthur, former Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. That all kicks off after this break. <laughs> 